Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Sunday, July 16, 2023. I'm Jeff. Oop. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number 702. And today we have our very special guest, uh, Dr. Uh, Word Nerd. Cook Angelini, uh, Edward Angelini Cook. Wow, thank you. It's called Are a you bit. Okay? It's called a bit because of the topic. Ah. Are you sure, though? Maybe. Are you so. sure? <laughs> especially, especially considering you're like the youngest of us. I know. I, I know. But I, I'm I'm the one with dentures. Okay. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I'm okay. Checking mate. Fuck you. Shit. Wow. <laughs> hey, Edward. <laughs> Hi, Damon. <laughs> Ooh. That was that was that was an intro. There we go. That's, that was that was something. Mm-hmm. On the spur of the moment, Gary, what what why did we bring the good doctor on today? Well, first of all, he's adorable and hot and sexy because, like, intelligence is sexy. Oh, <laughs> and he consented, so we love that. Thank you. Yeah, it was like so we were kind. having foreplay or something. I don't know. Yeah, it's not like it's or our theme lie, for just my our shirts, shirts today. Anyways, uh, Ed is gracing us after being back. It's been a couple months. We haven't seen yeah. you in a little while. Mm-hmm. Last time was, I think, April? <gasps> no. <gasps> I think it was like May. Was it? April 23rd is what I've got. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it feels well, closer. Maybe because, you know, as the topic is kind of showing. I mean, we if, all yeah. if April showers bring May flowers, maybe you just felt like you were, you were always a flower in bloom and you thought it was May. I mean, that's, that, that is true. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, but as they say, as you get older, it seems like time feels like it's getting faster. No, uh, (laughs) the last time we had you on for Landscape of Relationships, we talked about sexual scripts. Oh, right. Out of that concept came the idea about doing this episode. So you're back and we're going to talk about sex after AARP. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sex after fifty. <laughs> so yeah. Tell me, Ed, what do I have in store? <laughs> <laughs> in um, just well, a couple I mean, months, right? 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, you have uh, you have a couple, uh, you know, tests to look forward to. Mm. Hmm. Um. A few doctor's appointments. Mm hmm. Appointments. Right. Okay. Um. Uh. What else? Possibly, possibly some changes, and you know, maybe a need to have some conversations with people. Mm. Mm. Sounds intriguing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So yeah. <laughs> uh, Sorry. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, thank, damn thank, you, thank musicals. You. Thank you for uh, thank you for coming to the show. Uh, Anyways, I was trying I'm to make a joke like we like we said everything and now we can end the show, but we're not. Oh. <laughs> no. Thank you, Good night. I was cracking up because what Ed wrote in the in our doc, I was I heard it in the spirit of the musical hairspray. Oh, right. Welcome to your fifties. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Mama. Welcome to your fifties. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I, I I also had that giggle when I typed that. So we are on the same we are on the same brain brain wing. Okay. Brain wave. Ugh. Um, so yeah. Are you sure? Because that seemed to hurt you a little. <laughs> yeah, Thank God I have coffee next to me. <laughs> oh my goodness um so yeah so this is a topic that comes up t- comes up often and you know i mean this isn't something that is like specific to just 50 right um like you know i talk to some people who are younger than 50 some people who are older than 50 um but uh you know sometimes um you know 50 is a a, a big age when it comes to just overall health in general uh, mm. that uh, you know why don't we have a conversation about sexual health um, uh, when you get to 50 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah so so like a lot of people have um, like very healthy and active sex lives at every stage of their life uh, but that being said, there are some aspects of your sexuality that could possibly change along the way. Um, does that make sense, Gary? Have you noticed anything <laughs> that you're willing to disclose? It's quite personal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I will say this, like in terms of like libido, it's a little different. I mean, when I was half my age it was it was a everyday kind of thing mm. mm-hmm. like the prime of the prime of my procreative career i guess is the best way to phrase that <laughs> um so yeah i feel like that's a thing from back then that is not carried forward there has been a a diminishment so it's not an everyday thing but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I I also don't feel a need to be in a hurry. Like, mm. so like I'm I'm not um, concerned about time as much, and in the way mm-hmm. of like being you know like quick or whatever. I'm like it's okay. It's okay to take time. Yeah. Um. Well. You know, that is definitely something that we're going to talk about. Uh, And, you know, something that I know a lot of people uh, experience. Um, But, hey, let's like let's take a step back here. Right. So I want to I want to give a definition of what like sexual health is. Um, So uh, the World Health Organization uh, defines sexual health as a state of physical, emotional, mental and social well-being in relation to sexuality. And it's uh, not merely the absence of disease, dysfunction, or infirmity. Um, Sexual health requires a positive and respectful approach to sexuality and sexual relationships, as well as uh, the possibility of having pleasurable and safe sexual experiences free of coercion, discrimination, and violence. Um, And, you know, we are going to be talking about... um, you know, some physical, emotional, um, 
mental kind of factors that are at play here. Um, but we're also going to be talking about like, you know, how to, uh, you know, have pleasurable sex, right. Um, mm. in, uh, you know, all across the, the lifespan. Um, and you know, one thing that I want to say right up front is that this is going to require regular doctor visits. Um, mm. and it's going to require us to talk to our doctor about our own sexual health. Um, and uh, one tip that I like to suggest to people is, um, well, first, it's uncomfortable, right? Like, so, you know, my research, my dissertation research talked about this. And, you know, we know that men in general are rather uncomfortable talking about this. Um, so it's really helpful to bring a list of questions, comments, and concerns that you might have regarding your sexual health um, to a doctor's appointment. And... Um, you know, let's not also uh, have the expectation that our doctor is going to bring it up. Um, mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we have to initiate that conversation, unfortunately. You be your own advocate. 100%. Be your own advocate. Yeah. I, will, I absolutely believe that, you know, it, it never, it, it, I know it sucks to like have those conversations that can be uncomfortable, you be awkward. Um, especially if you've never broached the subject with your doctor before, but mm -hmm. if you are concerned or have questions or want to know more about what is changing, then your doctor's a really good source for information on that or can give you mm -hmm. a recommendation on someone that may know better than them. That's another good point. And the other thing I was going to say is, um, you know, there are also people like myself, right, who are out there in order to um, help educate and help support people on their sexual health journey. Um, so if you're not feeling very supported by your, uh, your, your provider, right, um, you know, we can collaborate to help you find the one that would be um, so that you can get that information and you can ask those questions that are really important. Um, cause you don't really want to ever hear in a doctor's office that sex isn't that important. Um, that isn't something that we want to hear no. of somebody that we are trusting, uh, with our own sexual health, um, to say. Yeah. Um, yeah. Gary, were you going to say something? No. Uh, <laughs> Well, so, you know, two of the things that I really encourage a lot of people to do is, um, you know, when we get to be, uh, or when 50 kind of rolls around, um, a lot of the recommendations are uh, going to the doctor for, for blood screening, for prostate, uh, prostate uh, check, and also a colonoscopy. Um, because, you know, unfortunately, as we get older, um, you know, our body changes and we want to make sure that um, you know, our prostate is still in good health and, um, we are clear of any, uh, like polyps or, you know, that our, our colon, um, uh, is, is clear as well. And these are, because those are important to, yeah. Yeah, yeah, these are important to, and like, those are things that you're, you know, um, our provider, uh, you know, should be doing, um, right. that those are, <laughs> Those are kind of important to the yeah. to their job. Right. Yeah. Um, some of us have already had colonoscopies, at least. Yeah. I've, I've, I had one because of diverticulitis, um, mm -hmm. my diagnosis in 2018. Um, I have not yet had to have one since, but yeah. Yeah, I've, I've had, had several. Yeah. That medicine that they give you is like, mwah. <laughs> what, that knocks, the one that knocks you out during yep. the colonoscopy? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is, that is a ride. Yeah. I mm -hmm. will. I, the, 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 when I, the, when I had mine, the thing I remember, I remember her talking, the person talking to me and saying, um, 
I'm going to count down from 100 and I'm going to, you know, I'm administering the, um, the medication then I'm counting down from 100 and then, you know, the next, you you're, 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 you should go out soon. Um, I don't think I heard 90 or even 95. I remember, right. I remember 199 and maybe 98 and then that's it. <laughs> and the next thing I knew, um, I was waking up in a totally different, a, a totally different room, in a totally different space. <laughs> um, Jim was there because um, he was, you know, picking me up, and that was wild to me. <laughs> Cause I didn't, I didn't know any anything. <laughs> I didn't remember anything, and the amount of time that had passed, and all of that. Yeah, it was crazy. I'm pretty yep. sure any time I've ever had one, they just do 10. They count down from 10. Ah. And, and and you're lucky if you get seven. <laughs> like they start at 10, nine, eight. That if you get if you get seven or six, like you you might need a little higher <laughs> dose or whatever, but otherwise they're it's lights out, Louise. Or you are like <laughs> okay, Louise. Um, and you, you are so feeling it, right? Like there are those people who like just hold on as long as they can. Um, oh, it's so fun. Uh, yeah. So, um, so yeah. So these are these are some things that you know, as far as sexual health goes, that I um, I recommend. Uh, you know, it's it is really you know because um, you know we're not sixteen anymore. Um, mm. We aren't. Um, you know, our relationship with our bodies uh, changes as we age naturally. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, can happen, like, so the first thing that I notice, um, of, you know, people that I work with say is kind of like what Gary brought up is sexual desire, their libido changes. Um, uh, and, you know, that is... Um, kind of natural right and there are, mm-hmm. there are a lot of things that can impact that right like we have like medical conditions can impact it our lifestyle um mm-hmm. our overall mood um, mm-hmm. our home our hormone levels um and uh medication right so right. you know yeah anytime we take like ssris or any kind of like medication you know one of the well some that i always kind of talk about is that you know, those medications can have some sexual side effects. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, yeah one I, of them being sexual desire. Yeah, I know I for me I've not had I for as I'm I've gotten older, I have noticed libido and sexual desire has changed in some ways. And um Sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. I don't want to. I don't want to really put a like that kind of calculation on it. But um, it's fewer and far between that I'm like, I get that like rush or urge to like I have to like get laid. I have to have sex. I have to do something right then and there. Um, it's very rare that that happens now. And is it medications? Is it age? Is it a combination of everything, probably all of the above in a way. Um, yeah. And and I think a piece of it, like, is also just about the moment. Mm. Like, I think when we're younger, we're, we're, we're game for anything. Like, anywhere, anytime, maybe anyone. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I think we just get more, you know, uh, I guess the only word that comes to mind is like selective where, and I want to, I don't want to mean particular. I just mean, um, that we, you know, we, I like selective. Yeah. Like we, we take in more of the information to process and then we make our decision. Yeah. Um, and you know, that makes sense. Right. And, you know, I hope that, um, you know, we can understand that, um, you know, a lot of people are very resistant to change, right? They see like, you know, something like this happen and they automatically think like, oh my God, there's a problem, right? And 
a lot of my job is just normalizing this, right? Is normalizing the changes that our body happens and, you know, um, giving language to this. And uh, that also, um, you know, Gary, like you said, like it's about, you know, hey, just that our, like we're more uh, selective, I guess is a good word, but I was also thinking, um, specific right like well i think i think we take into account what's palatable (laughs) like in the moment this is my analogy Mm -hmm. like when i'm younger i'm like people's like you know you want a slice of pizza i'm like yeah i love fucking love pizza give me that shit and then i get older and they're like what a slice of pizza and you're like what kind of pizza (laughs) (laughs) and it's like and it's like and they're like oh i just got some little caesars and you're like Mm, I'll pass. You know, and they're like, oh, I got some Papa John's. And you're like, that bigot? Get that fucking shit out of here. Um, <laughs> you know. Wow. And then they're like, well, I got some stuffed crust Pizza Hut. And you're like, oh, now you're talking. Butter me up. Four play. I, I see how you is. <laughs> Anyways. Wow. Well, I, so, first, uh, I'll, first of all, uh, I wanna... true, 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 true. Is that, no, well, is that what no, this First of all, I want to know who is this person that has literally bought three pieces, three, <laughs> three <laughs> pizzas from three separate places. I, I think I, that's I more of different situations. I Correct. know. I know. David I... up there looking for the sugar daddy. He's like, oh, <laughs> who bought all the pizza? Who got the buffet? Who, who yes. tried to like woo me with all the kinds? <laughs> yeah. Well, even like, um, you know, like I was talking before, like we were at a hotel last night and um, my like taste in hotels is like, like very, very different. Right. than it was when I was younger. Right. Before I was like, I'll stay in a motel. I'll stay like, I don't care. I'll sleep on the floor. Um, Now I'm like, I need a bed. There has to be breakfast. Um, uh, I like I I search the pictures. Like, what does the shower look like? Um, Mm hmm. (laughs) <laughs> is it a walk-in shower i love those right um so you know like yeah it just your taste changes yeah i <laughs> the hotel thing is so funny um because i was ahead, it made me girl hush um because it made Truth me re- hurts <laughs> it made me remember um gosh this was when I, not too long after I moved here to Cincinnati, I went over. I went out, went to Virginia with friends, and we ended up getting this. It was a motel. It was we we had a, we had to get it, like we were staying for a day or two, and we got to this motel. And when I say old, I mean old. Like nothing had been touched since the seventies. Yes. Or 60s. It it felt that kind of old. Um, but it was a bed. And um, it was a room. And we slept. And we, we did end up staying there. I think we did. No, no, we didn't. My, <laughs> You called me a princess. My other friend was, was more of a princess than me. So shut up, queen. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> he was like, we're not staying here. And we ended up crashing at are the people we were coming to see, we all end up crashing in their place. Like make they made they made room somehow. Don't tell me how, but they made room. Um and it it worked out. I think it was for a night or two and it was fine, but Jesus Christ. Um now I'm like you, Ed. I, I need I need to see what the what are the reviews, what are people saying about this place, what are recent reviews. Uh, I don't just want the most popular. I want, like, what is something that is happening with, like, a week ago? I want to hear what someone had to say who was just there. Um, Got to have breakfast. Got to be convenient in some way. Yeah, that kind of space. Yes. Yeah. Um, Do they have a waffle machine? Yep. That's probably one of the most important parts. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Um, Yeah. Waffles. Yep. I need. I need so, more than waffles, personally. But that's just me. I need well, to I not need have breakfast sausage. at the hotel. That's what I need. <laughs> oh, 
because because I'm not doing the breakfast that's included. I mean, if I have to, that's because it's work. But if it's my vacation and I'm on my own time, no, ma'am. Like, I'm gonna go someplace local, someplace that's like well rated. Not not this not, not this continental bullshit in the morning. No, no. Well, no, we're no, we're no, we're not doing continental. No, like we're talking like sit down, like a, a proper buffet. I like I like I like a proper buffet. It's good for me. Um, because you want to yeah, peruse, you want to pick amongst the, the selections. I want to get as much sausage as I want, Gary. Are we talking about breakfast or a bear run? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um anywho so back okay so we're we're kind of talking like being a little bit more selective um you know and also knowing that like you know i'm not you know we're not just going to be like jumping at everything that we that walks by us right so um there is a framework for desire that is typically for women um or uh but i think that it's also important to to kind of bring men into the conversation that you know when we were younger um it was very much like we could uh you know like we're hard all the time right like a slight breeze um but as we get older that doesn't really happen as much um and uh, and that is what's called um, spontaneous desire, right? Like we don't even need anything to desire sex, right? But as we get older, we might need to know what kind of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. What kind of pizza is coming, right? So, mm-hmm. um, you know, okay, I could be hungry for that. Um, so that is more responsive desire. So knowing that mm. like, you know, um, and especially when we get into uh, like physical kind of changes that happen, that um, sometimes we need um, to be touched. Sometimes we need the action to start in order for our desire to come to the table, right? And um, and that is you know sometimes really the same with uh, women, but it can be the same with men. Um, yeah, and. That sometimes we don't desire it, um, but the other kind of important here is um, there's there's a difference between desire and willingness, right? Mm. Um, that like I may not have the desire, but I might have the willingness in order to um, engage with intimacy with another person, right? Mm. Uh, because that's really important for our relationship. Um, I want to be connected to you, uh, so. Uh, So that's another factor. And I think that we it's really important for us to kind of change the way that we are talking about uh, sex um, as we get older um, into willingness. What am I willing to do? What am I not willing to do? Right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. (sighs) Yeah, I know for me, just in general, especially like, again, as we're kind of I've gotten older, I've I. I can't just like. Here we go. Let's have sex. Um, That just doesn't happen anymore. That's not going to happen. It rarely happened when I was younger, but I could get through certain things Mm -hmm. um, easier. Now, I need I need more than. Actually, the thing that bothers me the most is people who will immediately be like, "Let's fuck," like with like their first second sentence or word or phrase or whatever, and like, no. I'm good. It's almost a medium, almost a turn off. Because to me, it's like I I don't. That's not how I roll it. Yeah, <laughs> you, you need the fork. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah, <laughs> like sometimes you don't, you don't. Want, sometimes you don't want to. <laughs> sometimes your body doesn't feel like it can. Um, are, um, in this case, I need more than a. I don't. I need more than your interest to be interested. Ooh, that was good, Damon. Touche. Yeah. Mm. You're welcome. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, 
you know, even like Jeff, right? Like, it's like, um, I'm not, I'm not throwing a D20 every time here, right? Like, you know, sometimes we got to start at three, <laughs> work our way up to a 20 if, 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 uh, if it even gets there. Jeez. Um, so let's see, what else? Um, so, you know, like something that happens, right, at, that happens, you know, is erectile dysfunction. Um, and it's so it's really important. I want to kind of put it out there that the age itself is does not necessarily cause um, ED, um, but natural aging and illness can um, impact our sexual response, right? Which is kind of like, if we were to put those in quotes, right? That's what that's what we're talking about. As we age, it can impact our sexual response. But age specifically doesn't cause erectile dysfunction. That makes sense? Right, yeah. Um, because, you know, as we know that, you know, there are plenty of um, men that I, that, I, that I see that experience this, uh, you know, in their twenties, their thirties, their forties. Um, so it's not necessarily like a quote unquote old per, old man's thing, but um, you know, just to define it. So erectile dysfunction is a biopsychosocial phenomenon uh, with biological, f- uh, physical, psychological, behavioral, emotional, cognitive fa- uh, and cognitive factors, as well as relationally. So our relationship with ourselves, with our identity, um, our relationship uh, with other people and our relationship to society um, mm. and our and our own you know masculinity and it also has some intimacy factors as well as that um, and uh, you know and when I do see people right who like all from all ages right like it's really important that we figure out what is going on um, because it can be any of these things, um, not just one of them. It doesn't have to just be physical. Mm. Interesting. That being said, right, when we are talking about um, people like 50 or plus, right, there are some things that could possibly be going on. We talk about medication again, right? Sometimes medication has an impact when we're talking about blood pressure, when we're talking about like heart medication that can have an impact. Um, again, you know, some people, you know, take, uh, you know, uh, anti-anxiety or, or yeah, like anti-anxiety or depression medication, right. That can have an impact. It can also be impacted by a medical condition that we have. Um, so, you know, so that's another thing to, to think about it. So that being said, um, the other thing that I want to also say is, Another part of this is your relationship with your penis. Um, that is that is that is something that's really important because we have uh, we have so many um, like culturally um, men's relationship with their pe- like it's like their penis is their everything. It's like a it's well it's an extension of themselves, right? And mm-hmm. if it's not doing what they um think it should be doing um it's like a like a big hit to them and their masculinity right yeah that's the the there's a i forget who it was it was a old joke from um back in the day where no it oh god it's it was a terrible thing on south park sorry just (laughs) um just about how like the joke is that people always make jokes about penises. Like when you're young, it's like, you know, too small, too big, too whatever, to something, this or the other. And it, those are jokes that immediately can hit a man literally in the hardest, in the worst place, in the worst spot. Because um, we, as a society, put a lot of power in our penises. Yep. And... Um, that's been, you know, it's, it's rather intriguing and rather interesting hearing you mention, say that, because to me, that's a, 
that's something that a lot of people, a lot of people have an issue with is that we need to get out of that, that we need to get out of that mindset. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, well, not just get out of it, normalize it, right? That like, hey, mm-hmm. this is something, this is something that's happening, right? And right. this isn't, this isn't just a you thing. This is a, an us thing. This is a we thing. And mm-hmm. it's, and it's, and it's okay, right? It's, yeah. um, you know, you are having a natural response to a natural response. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I like, the kind of a light bulb goes off for a lot of men when I tell them that, um, hey, uh, an erection isn't required. And we've talked about this before, but a, an erection isn't required for an orgasm or for ejaculation. No, it is not. It isn't, um, but I think it's so few in experience and so um, minimal in statistical comparison that that's why we, we like put it in a whole different area or a box. Mm -hmm. Like, Mm -hmm. and I, and I think that especially the youth, um, you know, when we're going through puberty and things and it takes like nothing but like, you know, fabric or the wind or, you know, <laughs> some, <laughs> some random, you know, unknown thing to like, you know, start engorging, you know, with blood like, I, I you know, and, and you get an erection. So I think we. We find that to like we consider that the norm. Mm hmm. Like, to have the erection, so to not have an erection, I think, is the the, the issue that many people. They, that's what they turn it into. They're like, "Oh, well, this is this is not normal, quote unquote, or right. functional, or whatever." Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's funny. I've I've known for years. Um, I've been, I know I've been capable of orgasms without being hard. I know I've been able to. I've been able to get an orgasm without ejaculation. I've been able to get an orgasm without being hard. I've been able to have an orgasm, you know, not easily, but it happens. It's a thing that can be done. It just may take a little bit longer. Um, That's the big thing, I think, sometimes, too. We need to understand that, you know, it may take a while, but it'll get there and you just have to ride the wave. It's all about the journey, not the destination is there you go. Jim's favorite quote. Um, uh, so I, I, that's one of the other things I would live by. It's just like, have fun, find the buttons, push them, like keep going and see what you can do. Like consensually, of course, but like um, find those buttons and push them, have fun with yourself. And then have fun with another person and see what how that goes. Like, yeah. Um, <laughs> not exactly. you with the, with the fingertip like mm-hmm. hand movement. Anyways. Yeah, and just have fun with it, right? Um, you know, because yeah. that is another thing we talked about, like the you know, biopsychosocial response, right? That um, it's really important to us to find out like what is actually going on because, you know, sometimes more often than not that I work with is it's like a performance anxiety uh, mm-hmm. situation that's going on because they might have had a maybe not so um, firm erection, right? And then it becomes like a negative feedback loop or a positive. Negative? Is it negative or positive feedback loop? Whatever. Um, but it becomes a feedback group where, um, you know, they they start to get like really anxious about it. And then the the thing that I always say is, you know, think about our penis kind of like a um, uh, like a diva. Right. Um, it wants to come out on its own uh, on its own terms. Right. So like when we are putting pressure on it and we are when we are like, you know, telling it, you know, um, Miss Lapone, <laughs> you're on in five minutes. Um, you know, uh, nobody tells me what to do, right? And uh, yep. you know, will not come out on stage. Yeah. Um, you know, so we have to let it come out of its own, uh, on its own time. 
I like the idea of your penis as a diva. I'm sorry. That is hilarious. Because it makes so much sense. If you, like, sit there and try to get it to do something, it's going to be like, no, no. I'm, no. I'm locking myself in my, in my, I'm locking myself in my dressing room and I'm not coming out until I'm ready. Like, okay. No, we have to stop this right now. We are not, we are not pursuing this any further <laughs> because I am not wanting to think about a penis being either Patty Lapone or Bernadette <laughs> Peters or Mandy Patinkin or may she rest in PC Lane Stretch. We're not doing that. <laughs> Well, you do you, Gary. I think of, am... think of it as think of it as Beyonce or Norma Desmond. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. Demille. Right, that is what my penis is saying. Right when it gets hard, I'm here now. Mm-hmm. And then when, like you know, sometimes um, you know, I'm thinking about it too much. It's like, no, David, no, <laughs> don't. David, don't. <laughs> I need to go back to my dressing room for some orange. It's so dramatic. I can't with that. Well, <laughs> I'm here. I have so many things to say, and I'm not going to say them. It's, it's like <laughs> those times when you're trying to go to sleep, you're having trouble getting to sleep, but you're tired. You know you want to go to sleep. And so you do the obvious thing to help you go to sleep was uh, attempt to jack off and then your penis, despite all the porn you're looking at, doesn't want to go anywhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because, you, you know, like, it's I'm like, I'm, no, I'm, I'm sleeping, right? I'm sleeping. <sighs> what time is it? Yeah. I'm not coming out right now. I'm good. You know, this is not in my contract. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on an equity break. <laughs> you do I'm know that there's a strike going on right now. <laughs> Let's yeah. take a 10. Let's take a 10. Take a 10. Take a 10. Take a 10. That's funny. Anyway, yeah, sorry. So, um... <laughs> But there are things that you can do in order to negotiate with your penis, right? Um, in order for it to like entice it to come out, right? Um, uh, again, another reason why it's really important to talk to your, your medical providers about this, um, because somebody like myself can't really prescribe things like this. I probably sure, talk to you about. Are you sure we don't a, need like, a lawyer for the contract? Oh, negotiate the contract. Oh, We're going to negotiate. Know, that, would that make sense? Would like Viagra be a lawyer? <laughs> no, no. In in our analogy, unfortunately. Well, you said you had to Viagra. negotiate, and sometimes you need a lawyer to negotiate things. So. Yeah, I uh, don't know. Yeah, but hmm. Viagra doesn't negotiate anything. Yeah, I mean, Viagra is the the um um. It's the 11 o'clock number. It's the pep talk. It's the pep talk. Viagra's the pep talk. Mm -hmm. I don't even think yeah. it's a pep talk. I mean, it's a well, vasodilator. It opens up your blood vessels. It allows you to, to, to get hard. Like, I think it's well, the bouncer at the door. Like, <laughs> I mean, sometimes. Oh, God. This is what Cups Out Loud has come to. <laughs> Debating to make the analogy. Debating the about analogy. Sex. Yes. I'm for hey. it. I'm all for it. Um, but yeah, so like, you know, things like Viagra, Cialis, um, Levitra, uh, you know, these are all things that, uh, you know, these are tools that are useful in the vasodilation of our blood vessels in order to, you know, um, allow blood flow down there. And, um, you know, again, these are, are helpful tools. Um, and, uh, you know, also something that, again, talk to your provider about. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there is no, um, I always think it's really interesting, right, when I was doing my, um, my dissertation that uh, there's so much research on erectile dysfunction um, and not so much on other areas of, the ma of male sexuality, 
right. because I think that like, um, you know, our, you know, the uh, cultural relationship to the penis and the erection is, uh, you know, and its relationship with uh, procreation is really important. Um, right. So, uh, so yeah, so again, these are, are helpful tools that you can use, right. Uh, that are available. And, um, and there are other, uh, you know, methods, treatments as well, right. There is implants, there is injections, um, there are, uh, erection assisting, uh, pumps that you can use, um, cock rings, Right. Uh, there are a right. lot of things that you can do in order to facilitate and, um, and keep an erection. Right. And sometimes it may, again, one of the things that was mentioned is it may also be completely unrelated to physical. It could be a mental situation. And that could mean possibly getting a therapist or possibly getting having conversations about that with someone. Because there may be something going on that you find yourself there may be a mental block that may be preventing you from performing. And, you know, for some people, right. Like it's really important, like possibly even do some, like, um, uh, you know, think about it, like riding a bike. Sometimes we need training wheels, right. Sometimes we need to build up the confidence and the competence of, um, you know, having the erection there and engaging in sexual activity so <laughs> that we know that like, yeah. Oh, I can take this medication away um, mm -hmm. and uh, I still feel confident and confident in my ability um, to engage in sex. Right. Yeah. Um, so um, those are all really important. The other thing that's really important is communication, right? Like we always talk about, right? Communication is at the forefront of relational intimacy, right? And if we are talking about the landscape of relationships, um, you know, communication is really important with that. Um, mm -hmm. And e even with this, and, you know, like we were talking about before, when we're younger, we don't really think, you know, we're just good to go, right? We're ready. Um, but uh, Barry McCarthy um, and Michael Metz, uh, they are two uh, people <laughs> who... Uh, <laughs> you know, talk a lot about sexual health. Um, and they have a book that I, um, I included a link for called coping with erectile dysfunction that also includes information on like sexual desire. And they talk about that, like, um, adult sex is, um, interpersonal. Um, you know, it's something that we have to, uh, discuss. It's something we have to, uh, you know, uh, negotiate, um, something about to communicate. So in order to maintain sexual intimacy, um, it's really important to adapt a flexible sexual relationship with ourselves and our partners um, mm. so that we can negotiate what we really want to do, kind of like what Gary was talking about with the pizza, right? Um, you know, what kind of, what are you thinking? Well, you know, um, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to go, but let's let's give it a shot. Right. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Interpersonal makes a lot of sense. I mean, yes, you can have sex with yourself. Masturbation is a thing, absolutely. But um, sometimes we enjoy that intimacy and sharing that with another person. And as you mentioned, you know, at this later stage, you know, 50s, what have you, then your maybe your maybe your interpersonal skills um, need some work. Yep. And there are um, a lot of uh, psychosexual skills um, that we can develop uh, in order to help with that. Mm. So, um, so yeah, so that's, uh, those are definitely some uh, things to consider, right, as we, um, as we get older and also like one of the other things that um, that is really important, especially when we're talking about like our sexual response cycle is like maintaining an active lifestyle, um, you know, uh, that can help facilitate blood flow throughout the body. Um, and, uh, you know, that doesn't hurt. <laughs>
Yeah. Um, so yeah. Welcome to the fifties. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah, welcome to the fifties indeed. It's it's interesting to me. Um uh it's I'm you know, I Jim is my Jim is um sixty now, right? Yeah, sixty, sorry. Had to think for a second. Um so some of this is making some sense in a ways and um also understanding the way we interact and the way he interacts with others and sexual desires. His, I've always said, often said, I never know what he's interested in because I don't. Um, and meaning, I don't know who, who he's often attracted to. It can be very different depending on his mood and his interests, mm-hmm. his, um, who he's encountering. Um, that has often been the case. So, and I'm learning um, that I'm starting to find that to be very similar. Do I have types? Absolutely. But sometimes those types don't immediately grab at me like they used to, if that makes sense. Like, mm-hmm. um, and it's, imp- I think it's important to realize that, as you've said, your sexual health and you know your ways you grasp sex will change over time Mm -hmm. absolutely yeah Yeah, just go with go with the flow my friends you'll be fine maybe some less sex but you know what it's fine i haven't had sex in like two or three years except with my hand but i don't think that counts It's something. It yeah. does. I think it it's is something. Solo sex. Yeah. That is what we call that. Yeah. yeah. But with somebody else. You've not had sex with somebody partner, else. You've part, had sex. Partner sex is partner sex. Work. Yes. All right, and also, you know, again, where um, there are, you know, people out, or you know, there are people who don't desire sex, um, and that. Sure, sure. Um, there are also people who, you know, sexuality is fluid, um, and it can mm-hmm. change. Um, and we don't need to, uh, place ourselves into a, the same box, uh, for our whole life. Mm. That's true. Mm-hmm. Everything is about the now, not the then, not the will be, about the now. How are you feeling yeah. now? And you know what? That's okay. Whatever that is it is. Okay. Yeah. So I guess like in uh you know, when to wrap all this up, right? Uh first thing, talk to your doctor. It's really important to gauge your, your provider in this. Um and the other thing that like this this may or may not happen, right? Like uh, you know, uh, these changes are a part of the natural ordering process, but it doesn't mean that you're, that you are going to, um, experience them. Um, you know, like we said, people have healthy sexual lives, all ages. Um, Mm -hmm. and we just may need to change the way that we are experiencing them. Absolutely. And accommodate them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's more comfortable if you're willing to to process and engage instead of fighting it. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing that that unfortunately we live in a culture of vanity, specifically for MSM, uh, gay and bisexual men, um, you know who are constantly bombarded with like messaging about like being young, being hip, being like, you know, desirable. Um, and I also think that there is a lot of pressure, um, 
being placed on people. It's even like with like dating apps and like, you know, uh, things like that. Uh, how about we just um, like lead with the things that we can do, right? Lead with the things that we will do, right? Um, you know, I talk to a lot of people who are like, but I can't do that. I'm like, that's fine. <laughs> What are you, what, what are you okay doing? Um, you know, tell me, tell, you know, lead with that information. Yeah. I think that can be a struggle though, at for people who don't know what they want or what they desire. I mean, that, that leads down a whole different path of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm a big believer in tell me what you want. I, 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 I cannot stress enough like if you especially from someone who comes from um or has like leather and kink backgrounds and and experiences like i cannot go on do whatever you want to me no mm -mm, that's not how this works i need you to know i need to know what you want to do and what you're willing to do are interested in doing if you cannot tell me that then we're not doing anything because i don't feel comfortable like I, do, I don't feel comfortable doing it, going that route. Uh, so express what you want, and I will determine if I'm willing to be a participant in that. Mm -hmm. uh, well, so for, you know, oh, what, Gary? No, I was just going to make a silly comment that for Damon, sex is like the Spice Girls. Yep. Well, mm -hmm. you don't have to get with my friends, though. <laughs> <laughs> but they could they could i mean absolutely i mean then then you have references <laughs> that's true, true. <laughs> that's very true that right there that right there um well no because like i talk to a lot of people who they're like you know i'm uh, I'm not finding any luck. I'm not, you know, I'm not having the, the sex that I would like to be having. And I'm like, well, wh how are you, what, how are you negotiating sex? Right. How are you communicating about that? And they're like, well, I don't want this and I don't want that. And I don't want this and I don't want that. And I was like, you haven't told me anything that you do want. Right. If you don't want, if you don't want anal sex, if you don't want um, this, uh, the, I can't do anything with that. You you haven't told me anything. So do you want to make out? Do you want to do you want to cuddle? Do you want to um, oral sex? Right. Like, yeah. you know, you I mean, haven't told me anything. Like, there's there's got to be somewhere. Do you want an eye fucking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's got to be somewhere on the Internet, like a list of just like sexual acts. Just, just well, so from from the very vanilla to to the super kinky, uh, that so, you could be like, check this off, check this off, check this off, check this off, and be like, these are what I want. Everything else is a no. W Bear has that, right? Hmm. Does W Bear have that? I think W Bear doesn't have that. W Bear has like, um, hashtaggy things. But Squirt has something similar to that, and a few other sites. I'm thinking even Growler, as I'm pulling it up, because I haven't opened it in who knows when. Um, yeah, you have it has like a, a big list of like looking for, and you can like part what you want. But while that's but wonderful, it, well, and and so, I mean, something for you to have mm. versus like somebody to look at. Right. Because that's the thing. Obviously, people okay. aren't going to look at it. But if you then just come back and be like, "Hold on a second, I got to remember what I like." Um, and and but the thing is, sometimes that changes. So it's kind of it's got to be one of those things of okay, what do I want right now? Kind of look at the list and be like, okay, making out check. Uh, second right. check. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, no, nah, we'll skip the anal for right now. Positions. <laughs> and that sort of thing. I believe. And a That's lot fine. of uh, a lot of those sites are are adding side as a yeah. uh, positionality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is great. Um, but like, you know, even when you have people who say may struggle with erectile uh, concerns, right? Um I think it's really important that we get into the practice of being uh, comfortable communicating what that kind of means to 
uh, sexual like negotiation, right? Mm-hmm. So like, you know, when we say things like I don't get hard, right? Um, that can, I don't know, I feel like shame, I feel guilt um, mm-hmm. about that, like, and kind of like what I said, right? Uh, uh, an erection isn't necessarily a, a requirement for ejaculation and orgasm, right? Um, we, ju- we just need to get comfortable communicating or back to that communicating part. Um, what that means, uh, a net, you know, for a positive uh, sexual mm. experience. Yeah. Agreed. But I think that that self-exploration, that's like, taking the time to invest in that. And I don't know how many people really do that. I think a lot of people avoid working on themselves in several ways up to and including like their sexual identity and what they enjoy and what they like. And read ethical slut. (laughs) And there's nothing wrong with having mental checklist where the check boxes are switchable. We can uncheck things. Check it now. Because yeah. we're into that, not into it right now. Uncheck it because you can always check it again. And hey. I think that there's so many reasons as to why um, that is the case, right? Like we don't teach sexual pleasure. Um, there also we don't. There isn't a lot of research on sexual pleasure, right? Um, and the uh, like, how pleasure changes, how it evolves. Um, mm-hmm. And that it's it is really important to have those conversations. Um, so if you know if anybody is looking to have those conversations with somebody, and you would like somebody to help facilitate that, I would recommend you know reaching out to a sex therapist or you know a uh, a therapist who is skilled in uh, talking about sexuality journeys. Speaking of, can you think of any Ed that? folks might want to consider contacting oh my god me <laughs> <laughs> well i mean you know i am licensed in in pennsylvania and also delaware um uh but uh if there are um like if anybody does have any uh like questions and this is a journey that you want to go on please feel free to reach out to me and i can help connect you to um some people in your area who would be uh certified um Mm -hmm. to have those conversations um particularly people who are part of the american association for sex educators counselors and therapists awesome Uh, good deal anyways just trying to think what the acronym meant um what it would be. See, never mind. Ignore me. I think that's the end, right? Anything else? Final thoughts? I think I'm good. All right. For that, there's plenty of ways to contact us. You could do that over on our blog at CubsOutLoud.com. Choose an email CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail 361 C. We'll talk to us 361 265 8255. I haven't mentioned it in a while, but. Uh, also, because, you know, everybody seems to have these voice memo maps, you can always uh, just send us an audio file, too. That's fine. Through, through the email. And the follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Echo the loud and the appropriate place at URL. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. You can uh, join our entourage chat at bit.ly slash telegram dash col, which the good doctor is a part of. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can find out when we're planning recording these shows at bit.ly slash calendar dash well programming note that I uh, noticed we will not have a live show on the 30th or the 30th right yes we won't have a live show on the 30th but watch your feeds watch the YouTube page we will have a show just slight programming now. We're still alive. Don't don't be concerned about that, audience. We just we're don't okay. have a live show. <laughs> Let's okay. We're good. We will have a live show. <laughs> we'll be here, just not live. Anyway, uh... <laughs> you can get various accoutrements such as a uh, consent is my foreplay uh, shirt. I think we're all wearing. The pride flag 
progressive fl pride flag one yeah. in various other colors select the shirt you can just select colors and different types of fabrics very versatile uh prices may vary at uh, zazzle.com slash comes out loud some of the designs such as the consent is my foreplay um design was designed by smashy find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash smashy bear you can also become a patron patron at patreon.com slash cubs out loud i actually prompted the patrons to comment on the post for the show in the pre-show if you didn't get the pre-show because you're not a patron you're gonna have to listen to that and if you listen to the pre-show and you're a patron you should comment on on the post Ooh. you can also send us a donation at people.me slash comes out loud find us on various podcasts as uh, apple podcast google play spotify we do have our podcasts available through youtube in the podcast tab ah. both seal of drag race and comes out loud uh and as uh, so we're on spotify you find me well you probably can't find me i'm box set box but cub box something or other uh and i've been frequently calling myself elegos on in discord so that's probably the better place uh, if you find the uh grizzly falls discord be the closest to that bear gamer discord david um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at theatercub79, that's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9 on most bear-related sites are on Facebook and Discord at this point. Um, or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. Gary? If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as gabber 73 including, because apparently that's the trend, Discord. <laughs> <laughs> Ed, if people want to get in touch with you Where and how would they do so? Well, you can feel free to reach out to me on Facebook um, My name is Edward AC uh, and Or you can um, I'm also on Instagram At dr. Dot, or dr. Dot unicub underscore sex brain wizard um, And I'm also on uh TikTok as uh, dr.unicub79. Yay. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all. Bye. -bye.